20 already um, you know of all of the sessions that we've been recording together with Mike and uh, if you are interested in the previous sessions you know you could go to our Yuku channel and just uh, get those videos from there and welcome to session number 20 大家好，这里是罗蒙博格马佐夫教授。今天呢，是我们微课夫教育研究所的第二次试视频。如果你对以前的视频感兴趣的话，你可以到优酷上去看，也可以到咱们的QQ群里去看，QQ群里都是全的
，这些机构是不是对些这些股票感兴趣？如果机构没有兴趣买的话，那么这种股票就有可能有退市的危险，所以说他是不会去碰这种股票的。Okay, second question. If you, you enter the trade at phase C, how are the risk reward ratio and win uh, loss ratio? Mm. Uh, when you trade, do you care more about risk reward or win loss ratio? Hmm. 第二个问题是做阶段 C 的时候的的风险回报比如何，或者盈亏比如何？嗯，问罗蒙老师教授，你在做的时候，你是呃倾向于风暴比还是盈亏比 ？So when we enter point of end, uh, when we enter in phase C. Um, our stop loss is usually going to be below the spring or LPS, and then um, our point of entry could be on the way into the trading range, or on the first reaction, or maybe on the first breakout of that reaction. So our risk is going to be the difference between the stop loss and the point of entry. 嗯，罗蒙老师画了一个图，比方说，如果说这块是 phase C 的话，阶段 C 的话。那么呢，呃，对不起，我的笔为什么不工作呢 ？OK， 画笔没有工作 ，OK， 没关系。呃，这是这是阶段 C 的话，那么它会把止损点放在哪？止损点放在，如果这是阶段 C 的那个弹簧效应，它会把止损点放在这条横线上，也就是说，呃，这是弹簧效应的下面一点点。然后它的买入点应该是在交易区间内部，这里正在上升的。我们把它正在上升的点，或者是上升以后回调那个回调点、回调低点，或者是回调以后的这个突破点。所以说，我们的风险是这一段，罗蒙老师画的黄线的这一段，是从你的买入点到呃到你的止损点。So it's not only in Wyckoff methodology that we're looking for uh, the Reward to risk ratio as three to one, and basically we want to identify a unit of risk and then project unit potential units of profit, and just say that uh, for one unit of risk we're going to have at least a minimum of three units of profits built in. That's what allows us in the long run to sustain our equity、um, when we have our losses. 嗯，罗蒙老师说这不只是威克夫的办法了。他说，其实这是很多交易者的这个大多数的规则。他要求是什么呢？要求是回报比风险是三比一。他把它反过来了，不是风险回报了，是回报比风险要是三比一以上才可以做这个。呃，做做这个交易，那么他就画了。那你看，从我们刚才的已经画到了这个风险是多高，是从我们这个买入点到呃止损点。那么回报呢？他要求是呃有三个像风险这么高的这个预期，这个股票走或者是呃期货走的预期有，所以说回报和风险比是三比一的时候，我们才能够做这个交易。And there are two questions here, actually.、Um, one of them is asking, "What is right? So, what's what's the win-loss ratio at phase C?" And this is a very interesting question because in different markets, you're going to have a different rate. 嗯，那么另外一个呢，就是同学问的这个，在这个盈亏比。在盈亏比啊，他说这边非常有意思的问题，因为在不同的市场里，在这个阶段 C 介入的时候，它的盈亏比是不一样的。For instance, in the uptrend in markets, in the uptrend in markets, you're gonna have phase C that is gonna give you a very good signal. And every time we have some kind of reversal in the trading range in phase C during the uptrend, you're going to be extremely successful with this trade and with this concept. 比方说，在上升市场的时候，也就是这个市场在上升通道的时候
，你看啊，如果你要是在阶段 C 买入的话，那么它的呃它的这个盈亏比就会非常好，你赢的次数就很多。But at the first time when the trend is going to be broken on the last trading range, your last phase C is not going to work, and it's going to fail. And then in the redistribution, if you're looking for the spring and you mistakenly take this、um, as a spring and not as a sign of weakness, then you're going to fail as well. So this is where your rate is going to go down.、Mm. 那么这个盈亏比的什么时候这个比率开始降低呢？也就是说，从呃这个转势市场转势的时候，第一次转势以后，如果你要误把这个呃叫做弱势信号当成是弹簧效应的话，那么你看它拉起来以后立刻就开始下跌了，所以说这里有可能是输掉了，盈亏比变成亏了。然后呢，在再派发的交易区间，罗木老师画的是再派发的交易区间的时候。每一次都有可能出现一个呃弱势信号。如果你把每一次的弱势信号当成是弹簧效应，在阶段 C 来做，在做多的话，那么每次都有可能失败，除非是你做超短线。And then the second question here is, what do I care about? You know, this too, the risk reward and win,、uh, win to loss ratio. Uh, I'm really looking to increase as much as possible the reward to risk ratio, because in this case, if if let's say you have、um, a ratio of let's say ten to one, imagine that、um, each time you trade, you could either lose one unit of risk, or you could win ten units. Of profit. 嗯，然后回到、so、even with the win. Go ahead, man. 啊，呃，罗蒙老师回答刚才那个问题，就是说你更倾向于风险回报比呢，还是盈亏比？呃，罗蒙老师画了一个 R 二 R R 比二，也就是说回报比风险那个比的时候，他说他非常重视这个呃报酬和风险比。他说他希望这个报酬和风险比越大越好，也就是说。报酬越多越好。那么大家想一想，如果这个报酬是十，这个这个盈利和亏损比，呃，盈利和风险比是十的话，那么你只是呃有一分的风险，将会有十分的回报。So let's let's assume that our win to loss rate is fifty percent, and we are making an assumption right here. So then we would be thinking that. Half of the times, five times, we are winning ten units of reward, and then five of the times we are actually losing one unit of risk. So、um, we are going to be winning forty-five units of reward.、Uh, that's our profit if we are doing. Uh, the trades in a specific sequence, and that's what we need to understand as well. 嗯，他说，如果即使如果你的这个回报和风险比是十比一的话，那么想象一下，即使你的盈亏比是一比一，也就是说赢一次亏一次，赢一亏亏一次，那么每次的时候呢，比方说如果你做十次的话，那么也就是说你的盈利的时候将是五次乘以十，因为刚才咱们说了 reward 这个。呃，盈利和亏损，呃，不，呃，这个这个盈利和 ，sorry， 盈利和风险比是十比一。那么这里呢，就是说，如果做十次，五次是赢的，那就是五乘十。然后呢，如果你是，呃，亏五次亏损，也就是五乘负一，这个加起来以后还是你盈利四十五。当然了，这个是在什么？是按照你按照一定程序来做的交易的话。才会出现这样，所以这个程序也非常重要。我让罗蒙老师解释一下程序什么意思。So this question of the sequence becomes is extremely important because you could have the losses at the beginning of your run. Let's say out of five losses,、uh, you know those losses could happen at at the front 
of the whole sequence of trade. And then your equity goes down. Um, and then even if you lose five times in a row, it's still going to be a smaller percentage. So you kind of have to remember that sequence of trades, the, how they occur. Either the first one is the loss or the first one is the win. What's the second one is also going to be important. 嗯，这个这个程序他说很重要，就在于哪呢？他说，如果你要是说提前第前五次都是亏损的话，虽然是你只亏损了一，然后乘以五，但是呢，你的总体资金下降了。So my preference, uh, you know, teaching students, you know, what's more important, I would pay more attention to the reward and risk, because if the reward to risk is a high ratio. It helps you out to stay afloat, not to be uh, in some kind of big drawdown. You're always going to have good profits. 嗯，所以说他跟学生他聊这个问题的时候，他其实更重视报酬与风险比。他说越大越好，报酬越高越好。所以如果这样的话，你可以在市场里待很长时间。At the same time as you start looking for trades that have that favorable reward to risk ratio. Uh, start working on your win to loss ratio and just, you know, win to loss ratio mostly is about analytics, you know, how you analyze the markets. So just improve your analysis. Mm.呃,在你的这个回报和风险比非常高的时候,你再去呃强化你的盈亏比,而这个盈亏比呢,多数来说都是对市场的研究。也就是说看你怎么样研究这个市场。All right. Well, good question. Thank you. 好，谢谢大家。呃，这个问题问的很好。Okay, next one. Uh, will institu uh, institutions accumulate commodities as they accumulate stocks? Commodities have delivery within three months. 嗯，第三个问题问的其实是，就是说这些机构会不会呃，对于这种呃大宗商品期货的。吸筹也像像股票吸筹那样，因为什么？大家知道这个大宗商品的期货，它有一个交割期，一般来说几个月的交割期。呃、uh, ，so there will be two types of institutions, right? So, uh, CEO type of institutions, uh, somebody like Warren Buffett, uh, those type of institutions, uh, could actually physically accumulate uh, some of the commodities. I remember in the early uh, 2000s, Warren Buffett bought about 20% of actual physical uh, silver, and he stored it in a storage, uh, you know, for, for that purpose. So imagine he bought 20% of silver and just walked it uh, into this into his storage, and that twenty percent of gold silver was not available to anybody. So that's just one type of the uh, CO way to control the supply of a specific commodity. 嗯，大家记住，呃，大家还可能想起来，那个罗蒙老师以前谈机构的时候啊，谈机构有几种，比方说第一种呢。它是市场综合人类的机构，比方说，举个例子来说，就是呃，沃伦巴菲，就是巴菲特。巴菲特他记得在两千年的时候，他有的时候囤积这种大宗商品期货，怎么囤积呢？是他是囤积实物的。比方说，在两千年左右，他呃，大概他所有的这个资金里面，他囤积了百分之二十的白银。当时他是囤积的是白银的实物，而不是说那个咱们说的大宗商品的那个，就是那个交易的那个那个数字。他是囤积的实物，他买了白银以后，就把它放在储藏柜里，就不是说储藏柜，咱们叫做仓储，存在仓储仓储里面。这样的话，那百分之二十的白银是没有人可以去动的，也不用去交易的。The second type of institutions that could be operating in this market are into in institutional trend followers, and they will be always concerned about the emergence of the trend, and they would be looking for liquidity to get in, into the position. Go ahead, Mike. 嗯，呃，我记得这是罗蒙老师在十月五号讲的那次课的，就是两种机构的呃。
区别。然后第二类机构呢，咱们叫做什么？叫做趋势跟从机构。趋势跟从机构呢，它要看的什么？它要看哎，这个这个趋势有没有建立起来？第二呢，就这个市场的这个呃流通量大不大？我能不能够快速的进出，很容易的进出？ So they would be more concerned about um, uh, doing their rollover, and as they acquire position, let's say on the way up, and they would be rolling over, you know, at some points of the trend, and they would be giving up that position once the trend is broken. 嗯，对于这种趋势跟从者的跟从的这个机构而言，他们要看的就是这个低。这个有没有这个趋势建立起来？趋势通道在哪里？他们买的就是从趋势建立完以后，在这个某些点位，在回调的点位，呃，他们认为是低点的时候，然后进行买入。等到趋势结束的时候，他们卖出了。And that should answer also question number four. That's also about the rollovers. 这个这个方法呢，也就是回答了第四个问题，也就是这些呃机构。应该是趋势跟从机构，他们是怎么去蓄蓄积这些大宗商品期货的？因为呢，他们是每一次他们叫流转，就是到到一次交割期以后就卖掉，突然重新再买回来，在新的交割新的期间在呃期货期间里再买回来。Okay, well that's it today for the questions. Thank you for your questions. We really appreciate this. 嗯，谢谢大家问的问题，然后今天问题讲完。咱们再讲下面的。Okay, and now let's talk about first instrument for today, my my tie. 嗯，然后今天呢，我们讲第一个图，茅台。And we have seen a very very good uptrend, which usually tracks a lot of the. Public hands into this uptrend, especially on the run like this or a continuation of the run like that. 嗯，首先呢，在茅台的前期，我们看一段非常好的拉升，是非常喜人的拉升。尤其是在这种拉升呢，在二零一七年后半年和二零一八年呃的初始这一段时间，这种拉升呢，尤其是快速拉升，尤其是会吸引很多散户。So, couple of stopping characteristics here that we could see from the chart. The first stopping volume came right here. This was the first attempt to stop the price from moving up. There was some selling that was done into the buying of this bar. 其实大家在这个图谱中可以看到很多终止行为，比方说这个，也就是说有一些价格行为，呃，它把这个上升的趋势。给终止了，但是就像刹车一样，它并不是一次刹住，而是慢慢往前刹。罗蒙老师画了这个这个箭头，说：“你看，这里面成交量非常高，这里面就含有大量的供应。” We also could see that selling come on this bar, and then on a bunch of bars, uh, right here in this area. 罗蒙老师画了第二个圈，也就是这里面呢，就像这个成交量这么高。现在画的这个有带 PSY 相对应这个 PSY 的，这是属于初始供应。So look look at what's happening. We first have initial selling on the climactic bar. Then we have second time. Then we have the selling. It's on the bar that uh diminishes in spread, but still goes up. And then the third time that they sold was already on the way down. 嗯，罗蒙老师画的第一个圈的时候，嗯，来 ，Go ahead， 罗蒙 ，synchronized， synchronized where the downward effort is increasing， and it's increasing a lot， and the downward result is also increasing， so that tells us that、uh, these two actions are synced。OK， 然后，呃，罗蒙老师画的第一个圈的时候，在这里面的时候。就是画一个 S， 然后这和箭头向上的，这是他第一次机构在卖出，卖出完以后呢，你看这里面卖出以后，这个价格稍稍停顿一下，又继续上涨，然后在中间这个小圈的时候，这是第二次卖出，大量卖出，然后到 PSY 
，初始供应力阶段是第三次大量卖出，在第三次大量卖出以后，这个时候呢，也就是说罗蒙老师画的这个这个结果，让这个努力，也就是说它的供应非常大，而且结果呢，这一次的时候把价格完全的给压下来了，卖出压下价格，也就是说它的结果也非常大。这个时候呢，罗蒙老师就把它说叫做结果努力和结果是相称了，相对应了。So what does it tell us? This whole picture, what does it tell us? It tells us that、um, there is some selling that is coming, and this means that we could、uh, soon stop, have some kind of change of character, and possibly even reverse the trend.、嗯整个这一段的图形，这一段的行为，价格行为和这个成交量行为，告诉我们什么呢？就告诉我们，这个有大量的卖出，这个卖出呢，阻止了价格的继续上涨。也就是说，现在就像就像刹车一样，它不是一次刹住。那么这次阻止住了以后呢，也就是将来很可能会立刻就出现，不久的将来会出现，呃，特性改变。这个特性改变有可能是第一，把这个价格的上涨终止了；第二个，有可能将来会。So think about where the selling has happened. This bar, this bar, a bunch of these bars right here. Next selling came here. We could see that from the volume signature, and it's very logical because it's in the same zone. And then the next time we had some selling,、uh, it's been here, and then a bunch of bars after that, here, here. Uh, and on the way down. 嗯，然后罗蒙老师现在画的黄的部分，它就是描黄的部分，都是属于卖出的部分。那么你看，你刚才咱们讲了，在这三个地方有大量的卖出，第四个地方，罗蒙老师现在画一个箭头的地方，这个卖出，他说非常符合逻辑，因为什么呢？在他处于第三次卖出的相同价位，然后呢，到第四次卖出的时候，已经是呃抢购高潮下面后面了，这个这个这个这个阴线。大阴线的时候出现了，出现了这个大量卖出，然后第五次、第六次一直卖出。So look at this whole area right here and think about the result to the downside that we have here, and compare that to the result that we had prior. If we compare these two results to the downside, we're seeing that the latest reaction is much, much larger. And that's what defines the stop in action of the whole uptrend. 嗯，那么大家看两个波段。第一个波段呢，就是说这个自动下跌的波段，也就是从 B C 到 A 二这个自动下跌这个波段。另外呢，就是初始供应完以后这个价格下跌的波段。也就这两个波段相比的话，那么在自动下跌波段，它比前一个下调整要大得多。所以说，这里面大概我们把它叫做呃特性改变。This is a very important concept. So let me explain this again. Let me repeat this again. We are comparing one reaction to another reaction, and we're seeing that the selling has increased in both cases. And in the second case, we're seeing that the downward result is increasing even more than the one that we had before. So effort is increasing. And result is increasing. And that's all to the downside. So that becomes bearish, or at least、uh, short term. And that also suggests that we're seeing a change of character. That suggests that we're going into a trading range. 嗯，罗蒙老师说这个呃概念非常非常重要，所以说他再强调一遍。然后呢，大家看到在初始供应 PSY 这块，这里面有一段下跌波段。然后呢，在 B、C 到 A 二这段，就是自动下跌的时候，这有一个下跌波段。他把这两个下跌波段都描黄，描黄以后呢，他说在这里面相对应的，在成交量上来说，或者是说供应来说，每一个波段对应的供应都都很大。然后呢，每一个波段都是一个比前期来讲都是一个非常大的下降波段，所以说这是结果也在增大，努力也在增大。大家后来他画了两个圈这里面看。努力都在增大，结果也都在增大，所以说
努力和结果都在增大，而且都是向下的时候，所以说他认为这是市场出现了弱势，至少是短期的弱势。他下了 ST， 至少是短期的弱势。这两个努力增大，结果也向下增大的话，那么他说呢，这是上升趋势的特性改变，也就是上升趋势这个性质性质改变变了，也就是过去咱们呢就是说量变到质变，这时候是质变了。或者说，这个质变造成的结果，要么是转势，要么就是形成一个 trading range T R trading range. So if we look at now a change of character, if we're thinking that this is a change of character, then we're thinking, well, where are we in the possible structure? So we're thinking that we're probably just at the beginning of the range. And、uh, we're thinking that we are going to be in the non-trending environment. And if this is a change of character, a true change of character, then before that we should have a buying climax, and then at the bottom of the change of character we should have an automatic reaction. And then the peak that came before is most likely a preliminary supply. 嗯，然后罗蒙老师现在把茅台的这个图谱跟他。上课用的这个，咱们叫什么叫结构示意图来进行一下比较。那么刚才看呢，咱们看到特性改变，也就是从 B、C 到 A 二这段时间，我们叫特性改变。如果到示意图里面找，罗蒙老师也把这个两个黄线都画出来作为比较，作为类比。那么这两个都是特性改变的。特性改变以后呢，那么我们到前面看有没有初始供应。你看它在示意图里有初始供应，在咱们这个茅台图谱中有初始供应，然后自动下跌，也就是从 B、C 到。呃，到 A R 这这个大阶段，这是这这个是自动下跌，也就是通过这点来说，示意图来讲来说，我们看到了抢购高潮，看到了自动下跌，看到了呃特性改变的话，我们就预测会有一个呃平行的水平走的这个交易区间，或者是一段没有不是趋势，就是非趋势交易区间，或者咱们叫盘整。Once you entered a trading range, one of the biggest questions for you is the bias. Is it to the upside or to the downside on the way out? Another question that we're going to have is timing. That is, when is the price going to leave the trading range? And then the third question that we're going to have is going to be about the character. How would the price move in the direction of that bias? 嗯，那么我们当这个呃价格进入了一个交易区间的时候，我们就会问到三个问题。第一个问题，首先交易区间完以后，它的方向是什么？它是上涨呢，会继续上涨呢，还是一转身转势了，这个下跌了？呃，第二个问题，我们要问的是时机，也就是我们什么时候才会看到这个？它这个突破这个交易区间，什么时候这个趋势将再次开始？不管是上升趋势还是下降趋势，再次开始。第三个问题，我们问的是特性，也就是这个时候它的性质会什么样？也就是说它的突破或向上突破或向下突破，它这个时候特性是什么样？性质是什么样 ？So, uh, Chinese markets are extremely unique. Um, and as I'm learning more and more about Chinese markets, I understand that institutions operate only at the specific point of time. So in a way, it's kind of like maybe even a little bit easier to understand, but at the same time, visually,、uh, it's a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna show you just a very simple way. Of how to think about the bias, how to define the bias based on the institutional volume signature. 嗯，然后咱们罗蒙老师说，咱们中国的市场呢，因为比较特别，因为它只能做多，不能做空，所以说机构只在某些点位出现，所以说这个对于很多人来说比较困难，但对于他来讲，他认为是挺容易的，所以说他下面教大家一个诀窍来看这个方向，来分析这个问题。Look at the volume signature here, and we're seeing that the selling has come in a meaningful way. And if that's the case, then most likely your question is who is selling, and most likely your answer is going to be institutions are selling.
。嗯，罗蒙老师说，这个诀窍就在于什么呢？就在于看这个成交量和价格变化。首先呢，他画了一个大的这个圆弧，蓝色的圆弧，这里面呢，成交量非常非常高，比以前要高得多。所以说，他说这个是 m i n i m u m way。然后呢，大家看到这么高的成交量以后，就会问这么一个问题：那么是这个东西是在买呢，还是在卖？那么就看这个价格的表现。才能你知道它是在买在卖，然后呢，大家一般来说这么高的成交量，他要问一个谁在买谁在卖，这么高的话，那肯定不是说肯定吧，就是很大的这个程度来说是机构在操作。And what does this selling do? This selling is basically stops the previous trend from advancing further. 嗯。那么这个呃卖出的话，它造成的结果是什么呢？大家看，一开始这是呃股票处在一个上涨的通道内，那么这个卖出造成的结果就是这个上涨的趋势终止了。And then once they sold, what are they gonna do? They gonna do nothing. So they gonna become inactive. 卖完以后，这个机构做什么呢？他什么也没做，他卖完了，他就他就不活跃了。They already sold. What else are they gonna do? They don't want to participate in the stock for the time being. They have taken the profits already, so the money is going maybe somewhere else into some other assets, or they just protecting their own assets and they just doing practically nothing. 嗯。也就是说，在其实最重要的前一这一段，其实就是前一段时间它的卖出，在上涨的过程中卖出，卖出完以后，最聪明的钱已经卖走了，然后呢，他就基本上他就不再管了。你你想，他卖出完以后，他已经知道这个市场要下跌了，他做什么呢？他基本上来说，就会把他盈利的钱或投到其他部分，或者是就是保存保持这部分钱就完了，他不想再参与了。所以说，在大家看后面的成交量比前面的要显著的低得多。也就是聪明钱已经跑完了，他不再参与这个茅台的市场了。And that's what produces the trading range. And within the trading range, you're going to have, you know, occasional sells here and there, and they're usually going to come kind of at the same area of where、uh, the price has been sold before. 嗯，那么也就是在这个。这个大机构卖完以后，就形成这个交易区间，也就是咱们所说的横盘调整时间。横盘调整期间，大机构已经走了，他不再参与了。但是呢，大家还会看到，偶尔会出现一些呃小的这个卖出高量、小的高量阶段，也就是罗蒙老师画了这个黄线的这个，基本上这个卖出的点位也和过去这个比较高点的这个位置相符合，就基本上在同一个价位会出现这些比较高量的这个成交量柱。So you want to notice this type of selling,、um, and just to notice that it happens at the same price level. So once the price goes up, and it's you know we we encounter some selling, and the price follows to the downside, <laughs> that still confirms some bias that is going to be to the downside because you're recognizing some of the selling that happens at the same level. 嗯，这个非常重要，就什么？大家看。也就是说，其他机构，也就是机构，它是不一样的。有大机构，特别聪明的机构；有一些是比较反应慢的机构。那么，在这个交易区间内，同一个价位，也就是在这个最高价位，却出现大量的成交量的时候，然后价格向下低，向下走了。大家知道，那么现在他们还是在卖出，也就是它这个方向，也就是将来市场的方向还是向下。Then the third area right here is increasing attempts to go up, so the volume signature increases. And what we'd like to understand is what kind of result on this increase of the volume signature we have. 嗯，那么罗蒙老师把它现在编号了，也就是一开始最早的时候的大机构的卖出那段，它变成了一。第二个呢，大机构不活跃的地方，它变成了二。那么现在呢，就是大家看到最后这一段时这这一段这个呃时间内，它的成交量是上升的。那么上升完以后呢，大家就问了，哎，这个结果会是什么 ？So we have a really good rally up to about one half of the range. 
we would prefer that this rally to overcome and maybe overcome the resistance, but it doesn't do that. Uh, so this is a weakness by itself, just an ability just to come to one half. 它有一段拉升，也就是这个罗蒙老师画的这个蓝的箭头中啊，它有一段拉升。这段拉升从成交量和从这个价格表现来说，在初始来说大家看都不错，但是结果呢，它只拉升到了这个区间的一半多一点点
赶快卖出。你如果还没有卖出，那么到哪儿的时候呢？就是刚才我们看到了嘛，两个卖出的这个这个这个呃水平不一样，第二个水平的时候，一冲高赶快卖出。如果再没卖出，在这个最后这个拉升小波段，不到二分之一，都快到三分之一左右的地方，赶快卖出。如果再没有卖出，罗蒙老师说最后一个卖出点就是什么？就这个大的阴线，这个下来的时候赶快卖出。Well, how could you guys you are not caught up in this? And、uh, you know, looking at what has happened, we're seeing a major sign of weakness.、Uh, the price has been taken down, and the volume signature is increasing. So everything is in synchronicity of the downtrend right now. And the only rallies that we could have is right to this area right here. So probably some kind of consolidating、um, time if the markets are going to go up from here.、Um, but basically, a major sign of weakness defines, you know, that、uh, possible downtrend that we're in. 嗯，龙龙老师说好，那茅台讲的就差不多了，大家已经看到了这个趋势，呃，或者是方向变化完以后呢。我们老师画了一个通道，这属于下降通道了。那么大家看到，在主级弱势信号出现以后，这个其实价格就开始恐怕就是大幅下跌。如果说过一段时间市场回暖的话，市场整个大势都好了，那么老茅台的表现会是什么呢？它有可能茅台回到了来测试冰线，也就是这个呃交易区间的下缘，有可能会在这里面波动一段时间。All right. Well, if this is weak, if my、uh, Motai is weak, then let's look at the market. 嗯，刚才我们看到，如果茅台呢比较弱势，那么看整个大势会什么样。We're gonna look at the top fifty, and we're gonna look at the broad Shanghai index. 嗯，这里呢也是一个同学呃要求的，要求罗蒙老师讲一讲，就是说上证五十的期指。和上证综指的比较，他把这两个来比较一下。And the picture here is quite different than、uh, in Maltai. 嗯，这里面表现来说，其实和茅台很不一样。Ah,、uh, so let's look first at the、uh, broad index. We have been distributing the stocks on the way down and、uh, on the way up and on the way down. And we've talked about this in our videos, so you could just revisit those if you don't remember. 嗯，罗蒙老师呢，在这段来说，以前在咱给咱们做的公开课里面都讲过，在二零一七年年底的时候，到二零一八年一月，走进这是一一到二月这段时间呢，在整个上证综指来说，是机构在拉升的过程中有卖出，在下跌的过程中有卖出，所以说罗蒙老师把这哈。画了一个蓝的，这个像像一个锅盖一样的地方。他说这里面是供应非常大，而且是机构的卖出。Then we have an institutional period of inactivity, maybe until this attempt right here, and then look at this increase in volume signature, just a slight increase in volume signature over this area right here, and look how price is starting to. Move up in a different way, so there is some kind of change of behavior that we're seeing from the price and、uh, from the volume signature. 嗯，在二零一八年今年的三月份以后，在机构在拉升和下跌都卖出完以后，大家再看成交量，成交量其实是不如以前高了。首先，成交量低了；第二呢，这个机构，也就是机构从成交量来讲。来说，它不活跃了，它就比较非常低，比前面来说成交量都比较低，所以说机构在这段时间内不活跃了。只有在这个罗蒙老师画的这个 face A 这块，这块有三条阳线的时候，这里面是有三条线，就是说这个成交量稍微高一点，以后又开始不活跃。但到最近来说，罗蒙老师提醒大家注意，最近来说成交量开始上升，这尤其是这前面这两天，这块有两个两天的成交量非常大。然后看看价格表现如何。So as we see this change of behavior,、um, we are starting to think about where in the structure 
the change of behavior comes. And it seems like it's possibly coming in phase C. Um, we had a down slope in range where the price went down and then quickly it came back into the trading range. And then it produced some kind of test uh, as a higher low. Uh, and then the price is trying to get out of this and trying to break out. So this is a very positive development and a positive change of character. 罗姆老师说刚才他把这段的价格行为形容成行为改变他说行为改变就这里面有可能机构的行为在做改变所以说大家把这个对到前面的这个价格西头区间示意图来看罗姆老师画了两个趋势线趋势线里面这里面有一个
the result to the downside is diminution. And when we see that diminution result on the increased effort, we usually would be thinking that this is short-term bullish. Hmm. Yi 也就是努力增加了，它向下的结果就减少了，所以说我们认为这是短期的强势。So therefore, we are thinking that uh, the next move is possibly short term to the upside, and we have to think, well, where could it potentially go? What is the target? And the target we probably would be thinking about uh, in the top 50 that. Uh, we're probably going to overcome the point of the resistance, the latest point of the resistance. So we need to define where is the next point where they sold before. And it seems like they were selling a lot in this area right here. So we're thinking that if the rally happens in the top 50, it's probably going to go into this target. And then for the broad general Shanghai index, we're probably looking at the previous selling at the previous points of the resistance. And we're thinking that because it's weaker, the price is probably not going to be as aggressive as it was with uh, uh, the top 50. So we're going to have the target a little bit lower. 那么如果是短期市场是强势的,它会拉升的话,那么我们问的问题要思考的问题就是,哪里是目标?那么从上证五十来讲,那么他们哪里目标呢?第一个,它肯定要到前面的这个阻力线,就是罗蒙老师画的
，那么我们再看，哎，它有没有可能继续往上拉升？如果也有一种另外一种情况呢，就是在这这么低的成交量呃出现的呃的情况下，而且这个支撑不够的情况下，有可能需求不足，这个呃沪镍继续向下跌也是有可能的。All right. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, send us your questions. Uh, watch our videos on Yuko. In two weeks, we're gonna meet again for another review of the markets, and then um, in January we're gonna start the official course. Thank you for being here, and Mike, thank you for translating. 呃，那么今天就讲到这里。呃，感谢大家来参加我们的呃这个公开课。呃，下周呃下两周以后再见。好，谢谢大家。